evening and welcome to Apex Esports League. I'm JT and tonight we have the opening round of the Pagnum Import Supercars Championship. It is a 10 round series and it's going to be a lot of exciting V8 action over the coming 10 weeks. So it's not one to be missed. We'll take a look at the sessions. So to open us up for the series, we have Sebring International Raceway and there's 10 minutes of qualifying to after 10 minutes of practice, there's a 40 minute race. Weather is generated, time of day is is sunrise at Sebring and the car's capped at 47%. I mean, they'll need to take at least one stop and sometimes two, depending on the track, to be able to finish out the races. We did just conclude the Pagnum Imports Formula 4 trophy in our series champion was Sam Catacazinos. It's finishing up on 2,034 points, having a solid run throughout the series. And also on the podium for the series was P2, Mark Cochran, and P3 was Mick Clifton. And the final round of the series was at Rudskogen Motor Centre, and it was Mark Cochran that ended up going through and taking the win after qualifying 7th. And Sam Catacazino scored those fastest lap bonus points, showing that consistent pace he had throughout the series jump over and check out the track before Sebring International Raceway weather conditions are 23 degrees it's partly cloudy and the track length is 5.79 kilometers and it is going to be a fun one for the V8s to be able to be getting around and having a great battle I'll we'll jump trackside and see how drivers are faring So need to be making the most of the time out on the track. You join us for the stream, jump in the chat, say hello. If you're brand new to the channel, do hit the follow button, it'd be great. I think we've just reached our milestone of 360 views, sorry, followers as well, so that's fantastic. I think we've even just gapped over 200 subscribers over on our YouTube channel so do check out that as well and throw some extra support and as you're tuning in for the stream there's a bunch of sound effects controls underneath so you can have some fun with those as different moments go on throughout the night and we've got some debut drivers as well. Looks like we're still waiting on some paints to load up for some cars. Now John Gallant. Back on track after a bit of absence. Seeing back out on track. Alright, Bunt, I think that might be previously Ricky Bunt. So a name change. We have some debuts we've got Sean Berger and some fantastic looking liveries out there as well Dean Logstar Gordon McCulloch debuting league race with us tonight as well he's jumped in with plenty of drives with us before it's not on the streams I believe Matthew Charles is debuting. As is Peter Van der Kran. We got great size field. It's going to be pretty spectacular. Seth Herman is debuting in the league's team car tonight. 
did manage to debut in the back end of these supercars to finish up 2023, coming across from Project Cars. seconds left to the practice we are launched over into qualifying I'm seeing some very quick times the 202 just about flat my crayon having the fastest pace in the practice session and we'll jump on board for a lap around We haven't done Sebring in a series fast for a while. Not since the 3D curbing updates occurred anyway. So it's going to make things a little bit interesting for the drivers, especially the V8 supercars. Maybe debuting tonight. I was already putting some huge pace in, not slowing down at all on this outlap. Stay on board with Anthony Visma. It's a parked up car on the outside of the last corner. And that sunrise blinding on approach into the final turn. Rift out. Nicely done through turn one. This will be first turn lap. He's got some traffic to contend with. This is going to make it difficult. For only 10 minutes of qualifying. Cold tyres. These optimal conditions out on the track though. Here on the hairpin is going to be careful. It's fighting with that car. Still very slippery. Very 
tight line, a little wide off into the dirt. I think it's an off track. Pits. I'm going to take us for a journey down here. Oh, that's not the button that I wanted. Pole time belongs to Matthew Scholes. 201.805, we saw 282 in the practice session. Brendan Meyer nearly two seconds off that pace. It's only seven drivers getting in qualifying time so far. Gallon put in some good pace, setting him fourth, but he's just been bumped down. Mulford's come through with pole, but then it's just been instantly taken by Connor Nixon. And he's just parked it up after lap. They're probably going out there with just enough fuel for a lap. With this many cars out on track. Leaving it down just to one hot lap can be pretty risky. It's looking pretty balanced in choice of manufacturer as well. Be just slightly less Fords out on track. Corey Grant. It's like a different colour that John Gallon's running for the PR car. It's a nice spec mapped car by the looks of it. Drivers not yet getting in times. Only 15 drivers getting a time on the board. Myers getting around Buckland. Tuning in to see their friends and family racing. There is also live timing available if you've got our Android app or if you're on our Discord. You can actually jump in and we've got the links there. You can check out track map, any of the events that are occurring in the systems, so off tracks, crashes, pittings, and then full timings as well. Big slip there for Brad Hayes. No damage. With a minute left, maybe able to turn the car around.
just had a little position move there as I went to click on Blake Urquhart's name. So we saw Corey Brand obviously pinching a spot. Still teetering on this pole time. Times have come and down. Nixon still holds pole. Mulford did swap around with him. It's two tenths off now for Mulford. Qualifying is complete, so it's final laps. Dust floating around off that hairpin. Looks like it's been an off. So 36 drivers currently in the session. Little loose in the rear from Mulford. He's trying to push the most out of this car. He's gotten those lap times closer to Nixon's. Almost at the exact same rate that Nixon was improving. So two minute point four seven six is current pole. No, he's not on for a good lap, so he's parking it up. Shouldn't have to be as rushed as we usually are. We do have a different overlays running at the moment. So we shouldn't get a mixed up qualifying results at the end of this. We should be able to see out our drivers. Josh Harvey just crosses the line. Qualifying in 16th. It's only a mile left. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough time to complete a lap. The only car running, everyone else has brought it in. Cars being very slippery. Take a look at those qualifying results now. We should get them very soon. We just got to wait for Brendan to actually cross over. Actually, haven't got the qualifying results to look at just yet. The session is giving us a whole bunch of time. Oh, there it is, it's kicking us over now. So now we can check out those qualifying results. And we have qualifying for the opening round of the Bagnum Import Supercars Championship. Connor Nixon takes pole position with 2 minute point four seven six. And the grid is then Tim Mulford, Anthony Visma, Matthew Scholes, Ricky Hyde, Mick Clifton, Peter Van Cran, Blake Urquhart, Andrew Rushworth, John Gallant, Brendan Meyer, Dean Logsdale, Michael Quain, Ryan Bunt, Philip Furlow, Josh Harvey, Jackson Frewer, Shane Newens. And we're getting the car up underneath there, it's usually hides it. And then next from 19th through to 36th, we have Sean Berger, Adrian Simpson, Gordon McCulloch, Phil Buckland, Seth Herman, Tony Phillips, David Simmons, Brad Hayes, Travis Daly, Mark Cochran. And we've got Russell Gander, Royce Lynn, Willie Blair, Corey Brand, David Logsdale, Jim Caperonis, Stephen Luckhurst, and Stephanie Piccoli.
grid staggered for our drivers as they prepare. Get ready for the lights to drop green. It's going to be very interesting trying to find that track position in turn one. Sebring is rather difficult for the in-game spotters. Green flag, green flag. And green lights. There's already contact. There's chaos going on. Sure. There's going to be safety car for that one. like a spooled up car off the grid Let's see if you can pinpoint the moment as the cars gear up for it the cars trying to turn around locked together Closer down. Pure chaos at the start. Car's going to be needing that fast repair early on. It's going to be way too early to be able to take on fuel. Malta was able to move up a position in amongst all of that. So we had a couple of toes that were needed. Philip Furlow, Travis Daly, instantly towed, Caparonis as well. And Simmons tried to continue and then did need a tow as well. So the safety's car is going to be slowing that up a little bit. Catch the start. Mulford manages to sneak through, but a little bit of a delayed launch for Nixon. And the chaos unfolds behind. So the safety car will be out soon. to green. It's been quite a while since we've needed the safety car. Thirty-six cars gritting up on slippery cronk concrete. It's not gonna take much for a couple of spools. Slow launch cars. And you're going to have a whole bunch of traffic coming up with your clacker for it.
the hell of a cam. It's Tim Mulford tailing the safety car. Should have control of the race on approach to the final corner on this lap. Still towing, Capronis in the pits. Lynn still towing or retired. Yeah, I think he's retired. Forming. Should go green here. And the safety car in. Think I'll do a mad dash across. No, he isn't. Definitely going to be making things interesting for their pitch strategies. The caution laps being at three minute times. In those two laps, a full lap's worth of race pace being used. Track temp 23 degrees, so it's a nice temperature at the moment. Matching the ambient temperature, which is nice. Jacking the car. I'm all new to this one, so you'd have to bear with me as I try and get used to my navigation here. Back in the car. Simmons. Daly's not in the car. Oh, yes, that's right, he's out there. He's just on the same lap as Simmons initially. It's a little bit of catch up here with Simmons. You're ready for the restart. Looks like I've just come through Le Mans. Sunset straight. Drivers getting in close now, so they've been given. They're ready for green. Looks like single file flap cars to the back. Nice 
nice tidy restart for the drivers. Safety car charges off. Charlie's going to come in. Here he comes. Race over to Tim Mulford. Green flag. Oh, Nixon. Makes a daring pass. Not enough to be able to get it. I think Mulford's going to hold him on that inside. He's going to be set for the next corners. No, just sneaks in. That is tight. We're going to be in for a pretty great spectacle here. These three drivers they are pushing pretty hard. After the restart. Simmons has just made crash though. Nixon starting to pull away. It'll be beneficial for him as Mulford Scott Visma. Starting to get in a position to hound those mirrors right on the tail. Mulder takes a little bit of dirt. He's going to drop a little bit of pace. But it's not the easiest pass through this last corner, especially once you've just copped a whole bunch of aero wash. Get a little bit more drive towards the back end of that corner. lap traffic that's going to be coming up pretty close we've got David Simmons up ahead yeah. did have an off before I don't know if he's maybe contending with some damage Nine, ten, and eleven closing in. Mulford's had an off. Some dirt thrown. Hyde looking to try and get back on track potentially. and starting to put a gap. Is that a black flag wash off I think for Visma? He moved to the inside line on Sunset Straight. Skulls in P2 moved through with Visma moving offline. Nixon flying through, pushing that gap out to two seconds over P2 now. Uh, 
has uh, heavily damaged Blake Urquhart. and stability issues going on. Rizzi hasn't copped a, a flag for that one. This one's being a little bit loose in the front end. He's doing all right. Charles and Visma side by side. for an outside move. Maybe able to get the power down here. Similar line to what we saw with Hyde trying to use that outside line through the final turn just to get more speed towards that back end. Can really put you into a position to go for a pass on pit straight or at least set yourself up for turn one. Closing on the tail of Maya. Oh, contact. Blair gets hit. I think that's Corey Brandt. He's waiting to redress Blair. Traffic moves on through. redress there from Brand. The pace being set by Nixon now. A five second gap on the race. Top 10. Now 15 to 16 seconds away from the leader. Quain, just how much of a little bump there is as you come to that exit through the final corner. So you get that rear settled in and you just plant the foot. That feels amazing with how that car just sticks all the way through. You would swear you're going to hit that wall at corner exit. But that bump just turns it straight through. Drivers also probably preparing for this track as well, but to jump over into the IMSA for the iRacing official Sebring 12 hour that's on this weekend. Lake Urquhart's crash on lap 8.
pepperonis. It's a pass over Corey Brand. Looks like a potentially some damage to his car. There's heavy scrapings on the left hand side. I don't think that's from contact that he had with Blair before. Mulford pitting in. So we are at the halfway point. So with the 47% capped fuel tank, that's going to be enough for them to be able to get the car home. So pit window has been achieved. some pretty good consistent times and then bring him down and his fastest lap 201 322 on lap six you can see the pace as to why that gap's being pushed out over p2 this is now currently six seven point six over visma Been in and pit as well. Uh, card in with a fixed up car. That one. It's like contact between Thrower and Logsdale potentially. Actually, no. a little. Oh, this looks like teammates' cars making contact here. Yeah, spins right in front. Solid hit. Unfortunate for the two. They've had the tow. Hey Janelle, I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for joining us on the stream. Jumping on for some good V8 action tonight. With the pits getting underway, we're starting to see some small gaps forming between the field. Charles looking to make quick work. Mose for a switch back. It's going to be hard to keep the car in. Quite a rub through that corner. Very borderline nearly being pushed out from the dive. He made the move and had to commit to it once he was in that position. A lot of 
They're doing very well out there, Jenna. It was a fair bit of chaos at the great start, though. Safety car before the first corner. Logsdale and David Logsdale came together before. So they've got their toe done. The fast repair use. So that's just the one pit for them. Shane, you on side by side. Alongside Bunt, I believe. Tucks back in, couldn't get the run out of the Mons to be able to have a shot at setting up the pass. Rushworth's making some ground, Gander's made some good ground as well. These drivers haven't been in a pit yet. And was our race leader before pitting in. We had an 11 second stop in the pits. To the last quarter of the race 28 minutes of 40 minutes it's about 20 seconds away from Conan Nixon Conan was the first of the leading cars it's coming and pit hides in as is Visma. Alford was the first one to come in. Interesting to see where he comes out in the positions here. It's well starting to dwindle off from that. Leading pack. Josh Harvey stays out on track. Oh, there's a car behind that's just he shot that.
Charles in P4. Oh, and both of them go for a slide. I think that was a bit of object fixation. Perhaps there may have been some marbles on track as well. Chase here for P7 with Mick Clifton. Starting to close in on the tail of John Gallon. That's all. Force pit stops out of the way. Clifton overshoots. Sigh of relief from Gallon. Cars together, whether it's Simmons and Buckland. Crash about half a second apart. Great fight here for P3. Pestering those mirrors. In car with Tim Mulford. He's going to go for a move here for sure. No, he's going to have to go for an outside line. It's going to not be a very nice position. But he's put some big pressure onto Charles. Cochrane currently in fit lane. Oh, sticks the nose in. Gets him in the chain corners. Nice run of inside lines. But he's going to have to power out here. That's the fast left-hander. Charles making Mulford work. Fast and respectful racing, what we are witnessing between these two. Completely aware of their surroundings, 
the rice craft. Spectacular. Nixon still flying ahead now. Pushing out to nearly 16 seconds over Visma in P2. Visma's got about a four second gap to a battling Mulford. So we've only about four minutes remaining. Couple of laps, maybe three at most. It's keeping it safe. Well, to secure that P2 finish. Knights pushing to try and join this fight for the podium. For Cole, it's crashed off. Pure white. Car for McCulloch's. Nice and easy to spot. Starting to get a nice close gap to Brand. Brand seemed to have been able to pull away. Coming on to pit straight. Pass for Meyer, gets around Josh Harvey. So that car wasn't looking overly settled for Harvey. I wonder if he's contending with some damage. Maybe it's just some low fuel loads. Depending on when they came in for that stop, the car could start to get very skaty. Brewers had to come in the pits, as has Buckland. Steady lap here for Nixon, and he's going to have the race win in the bag for the opening round. So that's white flag. So he loses a mirror, the corner exit. and Charles still hard out of here. Hyde's also trying to sneak in. It's going to be an interesting... Very different lines here, plus some lap traffic. Simmons.
Nixon maybe rolling off a bit here. Maybe I had to not do it with some lap traffic up here. Potentially fighting for positions. Blue flags out, Cochran moves aside. Approach to the last corner. Checkered flag will be out for Nixon to claim the opening round race win. Still got some fights going on at the back here. Hyde's managed to get around Charles. Need to push here for Nixon. Dominated in the opening round. Only 17 second lead on the race as he crosses the line to the checkered flag. Congratulations, Connor Nixon. Crosses the line, the podium, P2. Mulford takes the podium place, P3. Hyde coming up very close in the end. And Charles, a great fight. All A with Mulford. Cloud of smoke. It's got to be Connor Nixon doing a celebratory burnout. Someone's decided not to slow down for the runoff area. I think it that might be Adrian's car. Absolutely destroyed it, stuck in the wall. I don't know where his name is. He's already brought the car back. Is he out of fuel potentially? I think that car's struggling fuel wise. up cars Caparinas crosses P14 Air race winner Connor Nixon 16.4 second gap well done we'll take a look at these results in a moment just wait for all the drivers cross the line before it froze us the data in this overlay. being helped across the line. Well, they've run out of fuel. Yep, they've just got the last car across the line. Fantastic job helping them out there. I'll take a look at these race results now. our results for round one of the Pagnum Imports Supercars Championship at Sebring International Raceway. Connor Nixon is our race winner. And then on the podium in P2 is Anthony Visma and then P3, Tim Mulford. And the rest of the standings goes then Ricky Hyde, Matthew Shiles, Peter Van Cran, John Gallen, Mick Clifton, Michael Quain, Andrew Rushworth, We've got Brendan Meyer, Russell Gander, Blake Urquhart, Jim Caperonis, Jackson Thruer, Shane Ewens, Corey Brand, Josh Harvey at P18. And 19 through 36, we have Philip Furlow, Gordon McCulloch, Mark Cochran, Willie Blair, Ryan Bunt, Dean Logsdale, Adrian Simpson, Stephanie Piccoli, Sean Berger, Seth Herman, Phil Buckland, Stephen Luckhurst, Brad Hayes, David Simmons, Tony Phillips, David Logsdale, Travis Daly and Royce Lynn. Take 
and see if our drivers are coming over for a chat. Hey Connor, congratulations on the race. What a drive for you! Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, it was a pretty pretty boring one, but yeah, it was pretty good to get some laps down and have a terrible set to slide around it, and yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, you managed to just pull away straight off of that, of that grid, and even with the restart, just able to keep plowing through to slowly push that gap out to 16 and a half seconds. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, pretty. Um, yeah, no, no massive dramas. Like the guys behind were just fighting, and I just started just pulling and pulling away, just saving those tires. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I put a bad set on, so I kept cooking their ears. So it was trying to not do that through the race, but um, yeah, keep consistent, and yeah, it's a good race. Yeah, then we got Tim. I just saw you in the waiting room and then left, so I just moved you down. Congratulations, Tim. Yeah, cheers, mate. Well done to Connor. It was a uh, great race. You're having some um, pretty good battles in that last bit of the race too. You had Matthew coming in on you and then Ricky Hyde as well end up closing in. Yeah, me and Scolzi have been racing each other for quite a while now, so I always knew you could have a good hard fair race with him. So yeah, he did well. It was really good. Yeah, it looked like there was a whole lot of fun out there and then started to, to push through pretty pretty well towards the back end and, and then get away, especially when you're towards up the front end for a little bit and then look like a little error or something made you slip back early on after the safety car. Oh, there's a little bit of tap from Visma. I think it might have been net code or something. I haven't really looked at it yet, but yeah, a little tap pushed me wide. So I just thought I'd consolidate, save some fuel and um, pit early and get myself back into a podium contention at least. But yeah, no, they were good battles. Yeah, it looks like it was a lot of fun and it looks like we're going to be in for a good show throughout the series as well if we're seeing that sort of action and some good racecraft at higher pace around Sebring. It's only going to be more exciting in the next round, especially for Laguna Seca. It makes it a little bit more difficult to try and get some, some good easy passes in the mix. Yeah, Laguna Seca is a pretty technical track, especially coming down through the S's. There's one mistake there and you going to lose it all but um luckily got some good setups from the team and yeah we'll work on it after tomorrow and we'll go from there yeah, beautiful it sounds like we'll be seeing a potential podium finish for you again hopefully that's the aim got to try and catch connor you know um connor's got a fair bit of pace and so is anthony so no doubt they'll be there again i'm sure a couple of guys from the behind us will pick up again so yeah we'll see what happens after quality and after a few laps yeah, definitely. And you guys want to thank anyone as well while you got the spotlight on the stream? You go first, Tim. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Always the gentleman, Connor. Cheers. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Melbourne Hydrographics, um, Bubbles and Balloons, Dare Jeff Tyres. Also want to thank uh, HRS, um, Aramex at Heatherton, and also we are proud to support and sponsor ITP Australia um, and New Zealand and we would also like to thank our other couple of sponsors RSW Graphics and Prestige Cinematography as well for doing all of our photos and stuff like that and also Phoenix Driver Development with a lot of their coaching and setups as well Beauty and I think um, you put up a link for that that coaching, was that you? in the Discord? Yeah, that was me. Um, that's something Laz and Rehan do. Um, they've had a fair few teams come to them now for coaching and setups. Um, a lot of the guys that race in Scops are using their setups now and have been and done some coaching sessions. So it's just yeah, just something there for the guys. Another option that's out there. I might have to sticky beak that myself. I think. <laughs> See, it works. <laughs> yeah, it's a good development. We've tried it. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, and from the Vermilion side, I'd just say. Uh, yeah, all the Vermilion boys, all working hard, trying to get in, you know, best results as we can across the board. Um, just got in Logitech with three drivers, so just working on that hard. Um, and they did well at Scops this weekend. 
Um, sponsor wise, yeah, just want to thank Mosel Racing, Race Labs, IRP, uh, Supernovus, um, Motorsports, Whitey Spires, uh, Great Pies in New South Wales. I need to fly over there and have a have a feed. Uh, Burling Motor Group, um, HiMo Setups, and then um, from side sponsors, from uh, my sponsors, AMX uh, Global, Nitro Racing, which I do their setups um, in the NASCAR scene. I just did all their Coda sets for NASCAR. So go and check them out. They're really good. Um, then, yeah, AMX for all the commentary and Bird Designs for all my streaming. And, uh, yeah, he did all the Vermilion paints, so... Uh, pretty fucking uh, oh my apologies <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty sick so yeah no uh yeah no pretty cool dude so uh no all those guys and i think that's about it and yeah thanks for all the guys out here and thanks for the commentary i'll watch it back and have a geese yeah it sounds good and we just got anthony in now as well congratulations on the podium finish yeah thanks it was uh it was a tough race trying to minimize the gap connor was putting towards us but he uh, driving exceptionally well at the moment and uh well i do have a chance i'm about to watch that incident if i did hit tim a big apologies to him mate i didn't mean to and uh i know it put him back a bit and i got a bit of an advantage but i apologize for if i did hit him you know yeah no good man i said i haven't looked at it probably might have been net code there was a fair bit of bit of it in the scops races there but that's nah, all good we had a good race yeah no when, it was, it was, it was battling good. that close together Netcode's always usually going to have a, a little bit of a play in it. Yeah. So, um, no, that was that was that was everything I had. I, I I had a good race and I was trying as hard as I could every lap, but I just I just couldn't <laughs> get anywhere near him. It was pissing me off. <laughs> yeah, he disappeared pretty quick, and then you were even having a bit of a lonely drive for a while as well, like Connor was doing out the front. Just put a you had a bit of a gap forming up around you as well, and just navigating through lap traffic. Yeah, well, that, that's that's what I had to focus on, just making sure I didn't get caught up in anything and try and get past the lap cars as clean as possible and and keep going down the road. Yeah, it looked like you, you had a fantastic run out there and I was saying we'll be looking forward to seeing some more battles, especially on the more difficult technical track at Laguna Seca. Yeah, well, um, I guess... Um, it's good good series there's obviously some great guys in it so it's going to be tough for the whole series if everyone keeps showing up so it should be good get some get some more laps get some more practice and try and keep improving a bit yeah definitely looking forward to seeing it happen and then do you want to thank anyone while you got the spotlight um oh yeah just quickly thank abby timber primal wheels box and locks modern deck blacktown mazda and uh accelerate sim racing Awesome. Well, congratulations, guys. It was a great show to see if you're out there trying to master those V8s, and you definitely did so at Sebring. So all the best going into the, the championship for round two. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks, okay. mate. Catches. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that, Pike. And there we have our podium drivers with Connor Nixon taking out the race win for round one of the Pagnum Import Supercars Championship. And then P2 is Anthony Visma and P3 Tim Mulford. And then we will be back again next week for round two, which we're all this talking about, which is Laguna Seeker and being a much more tighter track, more technical and less passing opportunities. It's going to be making some fantastic action to see in the supercars. So make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't done so already, you can also head over to our YouTube channel and check out all past broadcasts as they all get added, added onto YouTube after the streams are live. So do check it out. You can see the previous supercars championship if you're just a complete V8 fan. Otherwise, we do have a different series every series a different class of car and then also big thank you to our sponsors which is Pagni Advanced Simulation, Next Level Racing and then our partners Dubby and Fanatec as well as Razor and then our sponsor Stump Grinding Central Coast so thank you to all for tuning in and hopefully see you trackside next week